If you've ever done something with GUI in Tkinter, you probably know what the default button looks like. It's grey, rectangular and it doesn't give a lot of feedback. Simply, it's boring. That's why today I'm going to show you how to make your Tkinter buttons look 10 times as awesome just like this. What do you need? Python of course, I'm using PyCharm, but you can also use the default Python ID called idle. I also prepared two images, one for the button when it is in its idle state and one for the button when it's pressed. The second one is simply just darker than the first, like you can see. To be able to follow the tutorial well, you need to know the basics of Python. If you don't know anything about Python, maybe start watching some tutorials and come back in a couple of weeks. So, that out of the way, let's start with the programming. I will first show you how to make the default button and then how to make it better. We'll start with importing Kinter. We'll make the default tkinter window and call it tk. You can also call it root or master or whatever you want to call it. Then we'll set the geometry or the size of the window to 300 in the width by 300 pixels in the height. Now you need to put it as a string, not as two integers. Why? I don't know. They programmed it like that. So we need to do it. We will make a function that's called when the button is pressed and we call it event. What will let the function do is simply print something, for example, button clicked. Then we'll define the button. We'll put it on TK, so on this window, not another window, on TK. We'll put the text as click me. And we'll set the command or what the button will execute when it's pressed to event. So the name of the function that we just made. And then we'll place that button because now the button is defined but it's not yet visible. If I can just show you that, like you can't see the button. So we need to place it somewhere and we'll place it uh, in the middle. So that's on x150, y150 and the anchor or where these coordinates are is in the center. And like you can see it already works. And that's it for the default button, it's not very complicated. Now let me just show you what the anchor uh, really means. So I can also set it this to northwest and if you know your geography well then you should know that it's on the top left corner and like you can see the middle corresponds to the top left corner of the button but we'll keep it to center so it's nice and symmetrical and that's it for the default button now we'll improve it what we'll do first of all is instead of just Having one function, we'll have two. One for on press, I just call it press, and one for the release. For now, I'll just make them say pressed and released. Then, before we define our button, it's normal that this red line is here just because uh, these functions don't exist anymore, so I'll just also remove that for now. Then we, we need to load our two pictures. I call them photo 1 and photo 2. And how do we load them in Tkinter? Well, we use the photo image and we'll specify uh, all of this. Okay, for now I'll just stop here. What did I just do? I loaded the first image and the file name is button.gif. I put an R in front, it's not needed in this case, but when you're working with backslashes, you need to put an R in front because otherwise it will not see it as a raw string. And 
and I simply call this one button uh, dot if and this one is button 2 so it's exactly the same but like that now make sure that you put these two files in the same folder as the python file because if you don't do that you need to put the complete file bed also something very important I just record this after recording the tutorial is that the two files need to be a gif gif then when we define the button instead of text we want an image so it's very simple it's just image and we'll set it to photo one for now so like you can see now we have this big button and we can press it thing is it doesn't do anything it's way too big and when you go with the cursor over it the cursor stays like this arrow so to change that we can say here cursor is and then is a string and two so like you can see we already get a little bit more of feedback which is very important with the GUI it's way too big how can we make it smaller we use this subsample and we'll say 2 to 2 this is x and this is y so both x and y will make 2 times as small you can't use a float there now we have another problem being that we see the border that's why we're gonna set the border to 0 like that and now we don't have the border and then we have one more thing to do and that is making the button do something so we'll bind, bind basically means bind this event to that button and when the event is executed make it the button execute something. The event in this case is button press, you always need to put it between this greater than and less than sign and then the function we call it press here and this is exactly the same just with release and button release. We made two images for the button, right? But it only uses one. So what we're gonna do here is when the button is pressed, we're gonna change that image with config. With config you can change anything that you just specified here, like cursor, border, image. And we're gonna change it to photo 2. We're gonna do the same here in release, but back again to photo 1. And now we have oh something is wrong here let's debug that okay we also need to put an underscore here or just any kind of argument but an underscore then we usually uh, say that we don't want to remember this variable but you can of course see what it does and like you see here it just says which button of the mouse you used, the middle, the right, the left button, and where you clicked. That can be very important if you want to do something with that, but for now we don't need that. We just want to know when it's pressed and when it's released. And now you can see the button also gets darker when we press it. We can make it do a lot, I'm gonna leave that to you. And that's it. Sadly we can't remove the background of the button. So when we would put something behind it, you would see a white rectangle blocking it. You can of course change the background color to make it blend in. I know one way though to make it transparent, but to do that you would need to create your own button from scratch. It's not very hard, but it's also not one line of code. If you want me to make a tutorial about it, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new, leave a like, subscribe and also maybe leave a comment. If you have a question, don't hesitate to, again, leave a comment. I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. If you want to help me, please fill in the survey in the description. More info about it is in the last video. It only takes about 2-3 to three minutes to fill in. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye!